One nice way to keep players engaged in the game is to have challenges that will reward them. And nothing better as a reward than an asset that you should use real money to push it otherwise. So in this video, we are going to see how we can create in-game events and using Loot Locker's trigger API, we are going to reward players with assets. Here on Moonteaser, when we complete a thousand points, we reward players with a new skin. New skin unlock it, cancer sent. So let's get started. So here we are on the Loot Locker's dashboard and to find the trigger system, we go to systems, triggers, and right at the center of the screen, we can see that we have the new trigger button here. So let's create a new one and let's give it a name, new skin unlocked game uh, name. You can see that we have this option, uh, how many times this will trigger, right? So this can trigger an unlimited amount of time. This is especially useful if you are giving experience rewards. But since we are giving assets, I think that is most uh, reasonable to use the limited one. And let's add some rewards for the player. So on the rewards, add new add reward button. You can see that we have experience and assets. So let's add a new asset to this reward. And I will use this area sent. I will add a new one, add a new reward, Taros, add a new one, Gemini, add a new one and cancer. And now we have four rewards, right? So I think that is reasonable to use this four times. Because you can see that we have this grant all option. If we left this unchecked, loot lockers will internally try to randomize each one of these rewards and will try to exclude the ones that the players already have. So it will try to give players always a new reward that they don't have yet. This is very cool. If we check this, loot locker will give all the rewards that we set to the players. So I think that it's reasonable to limit this trigger to trigger only four times. Let's save that. And now we have a new trigger available. Let's see how we can use this on the game because we are going to use the triggers API, the Look Locker's triggers API for that. Let's go there. So to emit a trigger from our game is quite simple. We have to make a post request, a post HTTP request to this URL with the, the content of the request, with the re request body being a JSON dictionary with a name key with trigger name as a value. And we are going to get as a response, a dictionary, a JSON file with some information, with some useful data, especially telling that the, the trigger was successfully triggered and the green tape assets. This will be important for us because we are going to access the, the green tape asset name and display this to players. Uh, you can see that right below here, we have a list, a listing trigger trigger triggered trigger events that we can access as well. And this can be useful if you have a, an achievement system. So let's say we, we create some events in the game and each event will be a trigger. And we want to list all the, the achievements that the player already achieved. We can create an interface to display that. So you can see that making this HTTP request will give us a JSON dictionary as a response with a triggers key that is an array with all the triggers that the player already achieved with all the triggers that the player already triggered. So let's go to the game to see how we can actually emit this in Godot engine, how we can use this in Godot engine. So I have Mooncheaser opened here and the way that I implemented the triggers on my game is that I have a node called score achievement that has an a HP request as a child node and let's open its script. So this is what it uses to compare the scores. I have a score singleton that I connect on the ready function. And once it, every time the player scores, it emits a new uh, a signal. I checked if this, the, the current score is greater than the, is greater or equal than the score threshold, this variable right here. Then I call the method trigger skin unlocked. And this is the important part for us. So I will fold this and fold that. And I will open the trigger skin unlock uh, method here. The first thing that it does is that it goes to this achievement label. If we saw the first video, you will remember that I have a network state label, right? This is very similar to that one. Uh, I will open that here. So basically it has a label. It is a canvas item. So it get always on the front of everything else. And it has a label, a timer, and a, a animation node that makes it 
appear or disappear and it has a text that any node can can change back to our score achievement node it changes this text to new skin unlocked and show the achievement label then it disconnects the score singleton signal just to prevent it from happening many times in the, the same play session and then we finally reach the, the important part for us so we have here the url that we just saw in the api this is how we access the trigger system and the header we have the content type application slash json and the x session token remember this is always important to to parse as the the header and then we use the method post and the body we have a dictionary with a name key that has the new skin unlocked as its value and then we make the HTTP request using these variables and passing false for the SSL uh, certification using method and we convert the request body to a JSON file. Then we use for the response and use the, the fourth index of this signal, the request completed signal, as the value of this response variable. Then we parse it from a JSON file because this will be converted to a dictionary. And to get access to the asset name, the asset that the player just earned, I created a new variable that goes to the response granted, asset, rem granted assets. Remember that on the API we get uh, a dictionary that has some keys and one of these keys is the granted assets, right? And it is an array. So we go to the first index of this array and we find the name of this asset. So if we, uh, if we search on the API, we have the structure of the assets object that this is returning for us. There are many keys that we can access. For instance, there is a ID key that we can access as well. But for the sake of this system here, we just need to know uh, the asset name. Then we change the as, uh, achievement label text to be new skin unlocked and we use a placeholder and we replace this placeholder value to be the asset name that we just gathered and we convert it to a lower case and then we use for a, a timer that we create from using this method to timeout and we hide the achievement label afterwards so just for testing purposes i will go to this score if we test this we have an authenticated login let's test this this trigger yeah new skin unlock it Tower of Sand. Let's go back, see the skins, and there we have it. I have the Tower of Sand skin unlocked for this player. We just saw how we can use in game events to grant players some assets, right? But this doesn't actually give us any money. How we can make money <laughs> without games? So, in the next video, we are going to see how we can use a purchase and billing API to get a token that Loot Locker will use to unlock some assets on player's inventory. See you there, thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time.